Today is the 29th of December 2023 and as we can expect a spiting cold outside. As I'm returning from my university, I see a little puppy, a little dog sitting outside a shop and is shivering mainly because of the cold but also because perhaps it's hungry and it also seems that the dog is suffering from some some disease so i get out of my car and i try to get it some food i get some food from a shop and put it in front of the little dog the dog starts eating it quickly and at the same time it's wagging its tail and perhaps it's excited that it, it got food so easily Generally, as we see that street dogs uh, and street other street animals um, uh, suffer such type of things, but in some cases, such in incidents um, invite us to reflect on uh, certain on certain aspects of our lives, certain aspects of the lives of animals, especially stray animals around us. So this is perhaps an example of critical incident, mainly because um, it led me to reflect on the, the what and why of the lives of such uh, small innocent creatures, and also uh, perhaps on the possibilities on how to help, the, help them on a longer strategic terms. So I can say that this is a kind of critical incident um, and so such incidents can happen in other fields of our social life. Um, and so let us first begin this with a brief introduction of what critical incident is and what does it actually mean in the research context. Um, so first of all, critical incident, uh, we can say is a significant meaningful incident or a situation or event that results in or has implications for certain important outcomes. Um, generally, in the research context, critical incident technique is, is, a, is a particular type of research, which is basically a subtype of qualitative research. And the focus of such type of research is actually to analyze certain incidents, situations, events, circumstances, or actions, to have deeper contextual insights into the causes and consequences of these incidents, these situations, these events, these circumstances, and these actions that we consider is critical. Now, the other, the, the uh, background of critical incident technique as a research method um, goes back to the pioneering work of John C. Flanagan in the 1950s, um, who used uh, the concept of critical incident technique in aviation psychology, and the focus of his uh, 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 of his research method was actually to analyze critical incidents in the lives of people who are involved in the aviation field, such as the pilots or the other crew members of the flights. Um, generally, what is the scope of uh, or what areas um, does critical incident analysis or critical incident technique cover? So generally, although it started in the aviation psychology, the scope of uh, CIT has expanded over several fields. And so these fields include organizational uh, behavior studies, law, education, healthcare, human and, and human resources, and other relevant fields, mainly fields related to the study of human behaviors. Now, um, the why of it, so why is it that critical um, incident technique is actually used as a research method in social sciences? 
So the first one is that <clears throat> because critical incident techniques help us in deeper analysis, contextual, contextual analysis of critical important incidents or situations. Secondly, it helps us in understanding incidents or situations empirically uh, through the use of em empirical methods, through the use of scientific methods. And thirdly, it helps us in identifying causes and consequences and loopholes in, in certain aspects, especially in professional uh, contexts. Next, um, generally critical, the, the study, uh, the, the research that uses critical incident technique helps us in course correction or improving our practices and processes. And overall, this is a useful research method because it helps us in informed decision making. Um, now the how of it, or what is the general process of um, critical incident technique? So generally, it's, you can say in the general steps are similar to, the, to other research processes. So we begin generally with it, the identification of a problem or issue. Uh, and generally, these are in the form of research questions. Uh, so why something is working or not working? Why something happened in particular ways? Um, these are generally important questions, uh, which are the beginning points of critical incident technique. Then identification of critical incidents is extremely important. Um, then the selection of sample in order to, to get data from, then data is collected generally using um, interviews, observations, um, and document analysis. And in some cases, questionnaires could also be used for collecting data. Um, in the critical incident um, technique is the research form. Analysis of data is then the next step where we analyze the data using uh, techniques such as the content analysis or thematic analysis, or if we have collected some quantitative data as well, we can use statistical analysis. And lastly, writing um, and reviewing and presentation of the report. So that's the general process of the critical incident analysis. Now, here is an example um, from the field of education, and I just generally give uh, examples from education because that's my main field. So I'm actually an educational researcher. So for example, um, if uh, a researcher is interested to find out the impact of teacher's behavior on school students' self-confidence. So for example, what are certain critical incidents um, in the form of teachers' behavior that have an impact on, on the student's self-confidence. Uh, that's a question, a broader question around which we can use the critical incident technique to explore this question. So, so the question will be, what behaviors on the part of teachers, for example, enhanced or diminished school students' self-confidence? So there, are, there, there, there will be certain behaviors on the part of teachers that will aid to or enhance the self-confidence or that will have added to the self-confidence of the students. On the other hand, there will be others um, that will be kind of demotivations or in other words, diminishing factors in terms of uh, the self-confidence of their impact on the self-confidence of students. So then, uh, we will have a sample of students uh, who will have experiences related to the motivating factors and the demotivating factors um, uh, uh, with respect to the teacher's behavior. And so you can collect data from those students in the form of uh, interviews or maybe you can observe, use observation as well. And then the data will be analyzed and finally uh, there will be a report written uh, based on an analysis of the critical incidents that either boosted the self-confidence of the students or, or diminished the self-confidence of the students 
as a result of the uh, behavior of, of the teachers uh, who have been teaching them um, in, at, in particular classes uh, before they actually had that kind of impact on the, uh, the, the confidence of the student. So this is an example from education and so we can have examples of the critical incidents that have impact on particular behaviors or situations or, e or and, and there can be events in the field of psychology, in, in the field of law or in medicine or in any other field of, of life where generally there are uh, uh, human behaviors uh, are involved.